gentlemen, this is BlizzCon day number one. Saji's positioning absolutely perfect. And in paper, they're in a league of their own. BlizzCon makes some noise. Peekaboo looking for it, was balls, and now we're tied up. What a piece. And a strikes back. Thrill on this Demon Hunter doing so much work. This is just insane. The level of competition has never been this high before. Only one can be a BlizzCon champion. The Arena World Championship has brought us around the world this year. And we have figured out quite a lot. We figured out the best teams from every single region, but we've made it to the main stage, to the final day. BlizzCon, are you ready to crown a new world champion? It looks like we may have history on our hands as well. Still, a Chinese team lurks in the lower portion of the bracket, trying to make an upset. Sidu has made it back to the Grand Finals, and that's not all NA has to offer. To cover all of the action, we got one of the best desks in the entire world. We got Zico with the analysis. We got Super Tease and Ben Rookie for the play-by-play -play action, and I'm gonna be hosting everything for you. My name is Rich. Let's jump straight into it. Zico, how did all the players manage to get to this main stage to get to BlizzCon? It's been a long road uh, across the entire year. We had the online qualifier cups, which awarded points depending on how well you placed there, qualified for a bunch of lands, the spring finals and the summer finals, and then uh, your overall point placing as well got you all the way to BlizzCon. And we had five European teams in the competition, two North American, and uh, a couple of more from every single region. And now we've narrowed it down. We're at the last day at BlizzCon. It took a full year of work to be able to get in this position. That is the main thing to think about when you're talking about the Arena World Championship. It took them a full year to even get here. And then yesterday was an absolute gauntlet to go through as well, Ben. Yeah, there's no question about it. Like we kind of talked about, the level of competition this year has never been this high. Uh, we saw Method Orange, Sidu Mez, Trill, Sam I Am, and Sidu make it all the way to that grand finals. And now in the lower bracket, we still have so many good teams. Going to have to battle it out to see who will be playing against Method Orange in the Grand Finals. You know, two years ago, we, we sat here on, on this desk and we said Sidu's last chance. Then Sidu was up here casting with us. He was right next to all of us. And now we got to say this is Sidu's best chance. And he's backed up by a team where, you know, we've heard it from Mez. There is no other team that these guys would want to compete with. Supertees, what do the chances look like for them? I mean, this is looking like their best year, period. Just the synergy on the roster, the compositions that they've prepared for this tournament are top-notch. They're definitely playing that balance here, Demon Hunter, Resto Shaman, to the peak of its capability, making a movie, tried to pick it up, and they've advanced in the lower bracket with it. But I would say they're not even playing at 70% of what Method Orange is capable of. And Sidu is basically the final boss of this BlizzCon. I, I mean, that was so important. Yesterday, when we went into that first matchup with them, and we were looking at them against Skillcat, we said this could just determine in the entire tournament. It really could. And when you look at the pieces that Method does have, it seems like they have all the parts that you would want. Well, yeah, at this point, Sidu and Method Orange, they've already beaten the top competition at this event. The only team that uh, they haven't really fought yet is the Gozu crew. But other than that, they already beat Skill Cap. They already beat Method Black, which are the two best European teams. And at this point, they are the team to beat for everybody else because the other teams, they're in the lower brackets right now fighting it out for their lives. Exactly. When you talk about that lower portion of the bracket as well, a team like Skill Cap has a composition which looks like you can do very well in the lower portion of the bracket. When Method did play against them, that was one of their most dominant performances. So they do seem to be in one of the best positions we've seen anybody be in in a tournament. We just have to figure out the lower portion of the bracket. And this could go pretty much any way. I feel like the Gosu crew may be the biggest competition for Method, though. We haven't seen them go head to head with them. Do you think that that is kind of the team, as much as it's exciting for an NA versus NA Grand Final, that maybe Method Orange needs to worry about? Well, I think the two teams in this tournament I think Method Orange is going to struggle with is going to be pen and paper, because uh, we really haven't seen them go up against them just yet. Pen and paper, they run kind of 
unorthodox compositions at time, and I just feel like they are our team that will be prepared for Method Orange. And then, of course, the Gosu crew. They have been going back and forth with Method Orange throughout the entire year. So those two teams in particular, I feel like, have a really good chance if they make it to the Grand Finals. Pen and paper, man. This is just such a real threat. We were sitting backstage, and you and I were kind of going back and forth just saying how far we think pen and paper could go. Super Tease, what is it about this team that just makes them such a force? One word, Saji. For whatever reason, Saji is just a legendary healer, and it's going to be so exciting to see him go head-to-head -head with Looney. And basically everyone in the competition has compared him directly to Looney, being the Chinese version. And we're going to be able to settle who is actually the better healer here very shortly. You know, we keep saying that Saji is the, the Chinese Looney. I'm starting to think that Looney is the EU Saji. He really <laughs> is competing at that level. The amount of compositions that this team as a whole is bringing, they remind me of a Method Orange. Not only do they have strong meta comps, they have really strong surprises, Zico. Yeah, and that's what's so interesting about this Chinese squad. These guys, they kind of made the meta in a lot of ways. In opening week, they introduced a lot of interesting picks here. Uh, we saw the, the Fury Warrior as well as the Death Knight compositions come out of these guys. They also played the Enhanced Demon Hunter Resto Druid, which is frankly an amazing counter for Jungle Cleave. And we haven't really seen it in the Cups either uh, when Jungle Cliff was very uh, dominant. So these guys are very, very clever. They think outside the box and their uh, Monk Turbo has been absolutely stellar. We saw them yesterday um, take down the Australian squad uh, order and they did a really, really phenomenal job, especially Saji on that uh, Miss Weaver Monk. There is so much to talk about. We didn't even touch on the first matchup of the day yet. We want you to take a vote right now in the Twitch chat. Do you think the Gosu crew is going to be able to take it? Or do you think it's going to be making a movie? You can vote with the hashtag TGC for the Gosu crew and hashtag MAM for making a movie. And as you guys are getting your votes in, making your voice heard, we're going to look at the schedule for the day. 5.15 p.m. is when we are scheduled to crown a new BlizzCon champion, but we kick things off with a very important matchup. And when we were talking about it behind stage, I think that it really is up to making a movie to come out with a surprise here, Super Tease, if they want to be able to take it. Well, right now, making a movie is unlikely to play their rogue mage, I believe, into the Gosu crew. The Shadow Priest rogue would just completely dismantle that setup. So if making a movie can't play what they're known for, the only other option I feel like they have is Valet's Demon Hunter, playing that Demon Hunter Boomkin Shaman composition and relying on that. We've seen the Gosu crew go head to head the entire third season against Method Orange, a much more capable Demon Hunter Balance Druid, and they couldn't even overcome them. So. This is going to be a close one. The Ghost Crew do not have an easy road. The thing about the Ghost Crew is that they uh, have been a little bit exploited now in this tournament because when they faced pen and paper, we kind of saw, okay, the, the Fury Warrior and the Death Knight is something that would force WizK off of the bench. And we also saw uh, yesterday against Method Black that the Holy Paladin Turbo is still a very viable option if you queue up against the Gosu Crew. Same thing we saw Method Orange run against them in the North American Cup when they won against the Gosu Crew in their last showdown. So uh, in my mind, if making a movie has prepared one of those two comps, then we're gonna see something crazy here. All right, we're queuing up right now. We are ready to jump into the blind pit, the first one of the day. And by the end of the day, we will have a new world champion. Who will make it through this elimination series? Is it going to be the Gosu crew or making a movie? The Gosu crew with their legendary RPS going up against making a movie's RMP. These two teams bringing their A game in game number one. But Acro bringing a bit of a piratey surprise on that outlaw rogue. And we saw Alec use this combination of specializations yesterday. And it can be a surprising amount of burst. And if the Gosu crew are caught off guard, they could easily lose the blind pick, losing that swing match advantage for the rest of the series. This is the first series of the final day of BlizzCon. An entire year of investment will be decided today. Blind on Absurd, cheap shot on Peekaboo. Morrow getting aggressive with Combustion. WizK saves him with the life grip, but I don't know if that's going to be enough. Peekaboo has to trade out the Cloak of Shadows. Immediate burst in crowd control from making a movie. Pretty standard start. They would like to pull more cooldowns from Absturge, but Absturge is not giving it to them. That will allow the Ghost of Crew an opportunity to get aggressive moving forward. Peekaboo's ready and waiting. Yep, so for making a movie, Peekaboo is going to be their target of choice, making swaps on Absturge. 
potentially right here. It looks like he's going to get stunned up, and they're still going to be targeting down Peekaboo. Silence on Ratify. Peekaboo having to play defensive once again in this matchup. Having to vanish out, looking for a cheap shot on tomorrow. The Gosu crew needs to get some pressure rolling. And Peekaboo committing that vanish to break up crowd control and allow Absturge to freely start to heal the team. Ratify maintaining his mana quite effectively. Obviously, the Gosu crew look to play for that late game advantage if they can't find a kill before that point. Peekaboo is still held on to this vendetta for quite some time, and I'm curious to see when the Gosu crew are going to pull that trigger. But in the meantime, Peekaboo gets caught making a movie, try to make a move here onto the Gosu crew. But Peekaboo just not taking too Whoa! much damage. They followed up with Whoa! a huge hit in game one. Spearling Totem and the Void Shift overlapped. The Gosu crew start to panic. Yeah, that was Absurge's trinket as well. This is looking very good for making a movie. Acro now into a full kidney shot. Ratify immediately responds before going into the fear with a pain suppression, keeping Acro alive. That's going to save his Cloak of Shadows as well as his Vanish cooldown. So well done by making a movie. Another setup here onto Absurge. Blind onto him into a full polymorph. Now Peekaboo in a little Whoa. bit of trouble. Really not too much left. Both rogues in a little trouble. Yep, both Acro and Peekaboo, the primary targets here as they go head to head around the corner. Who will fall first? Acro forced to retreat away. Peekaboo gunning down for Maru now as well. Ratapai burned down below half mana at this point. If the Gosu crew can start to stabilize, they will win on that late game advantage. Peekaboo held on to that vendetta for so long and didn't really get too much done with it. Now they're looking for an opportunity to strike towards Maru, forcing a defensive Dragon's Breath. Maru trying to peel for the team and recover. After getting ready and positioned for crowd control nice read by absturge setting his team up here for this incoming stun will it be enough now it's the question no peekaboo forced to trade as well and the gosu crew are falling heavily behind on cooldowns yep full blind on acro gosu crew will stabilize with it. you look at ratapai's mana it is not doing well the gosu crew will have an advantage in late game Morrow taking a little bit of damage as Peekaboo's looking to reconnect, but this is a good situation for making a movie if Morrow can live here. Peekaboo, no trinket, Absurd, no trinket. If they can get a nice triple CC setup, they could definitely take the Gosu crew down. This is still an even fight. The Gosu crew are winning on mana, but they're losing significantly on cooldowns. Either team could take this as we inch closer and closer to Daphne. Ratapai looking to make a move, sprinting into the entire team. Morrow gets the polymorph. Will WizK be able to get the Master Spell? Doesn't look like he's even going to go for it. Instead, chaining a Psychic Scream together trying to stall out the crowd control, but it's not stalling it out. Absturge still locked down. Peekaboo peels for the team. Good defensive play between Peekaboo and WizK during that attempt. They deflect making a movie once again. Now momentum swings in their favor. Yep, Morrow getting bursted down. This could be the cauterize as it gets interrupted. All three members of the Ghost crew looking to close out this game. Ratapai, no mana left. Temporal Shield is used. Will he be able to survive? Ratify doing everything he can. There's the ice block. Master spell comes in from this game. But Peekaboo in a lot of trouble. A huge setup the coming in from making a movie. Unbelievable. Right as they're about to be defeated, they turned it around on the Ghost of Cruise head. Making a movie does not falter there in the final moments, which looked so scary. It looked like Morrow could have even gone down without utilizing some of those massive cooldowns. And in that moment, they find an offensive opportunity. They take the first win in this elimination series. Zico, how are they able to do it? I mean, they had some clean, clean setups there uh, from on the side of making a movie, but it all come down to the end there. Peekaboo didn't have a string for a couple of seconds. Acro saw an opportunity to uh, grab that uh, desperation smoke bomb swap almost, and they actually managed to get the kill there. Morrow dished out so much damage with that meteor, and uh, his fire blasts and pyros, of course, and they just managed to surprise attack them there. Now, I, I want to go big picture here for a second, because these two teams had very, very different roads to even get to this elimination series, and let's be honest, the Gosu crew probably had a more dominant path here, somewhat of a war path, and even dropping down to this lower portion of the bracket, it could have gone the other way. Making a movie has still had this chip on their shoulder in a sense that they are this rogue mage team. They've struggled to diversify in some situations, and we said in this matchup, they need to throw a curveball. Is that still the case? Does the Gosu crew have an answer to the rogue mage that making a movie has? Honestly, I would have said the Gosu crew's best composition into what making a movie is running is that RPS. I just think they need to clean up their gameplay a little bit. Making a movie early on in the competition said that their first few matchups would be their most difficult, where they kind of have to play these alternate compositions they're not as used to. Them <laughs> coming in with that Rogue Mage Priest makes me very excited because that is the comp they have practiced and prepared more than anything. And that's one of the comps, too, that not only in Battle for Azeroth, but in Legion as well, they use so well. 
Why? Because everybody is on their best, on their mains, and they're able to get by with sheer skill. They don't have to worry about the meta. Making a movie, though, is a similar team when you put them on the Rogue Mage. Well, the thing about the making a movie, actually, is that they've been practicing the Assassination Frost pretty much exclusively, and I've uh, spoken with them backstage, and Radapai told me that Acro hasn't been practicing much Outlaw throughout the year uh, in BFA because they didn't think it was that good. But then when they came to the tournament, they started seeing some of these pirates come out uh, on the side of the Gosu crew, but also, of course, in war games, and uh, they decided to pick it up. And uh, I, I'm not sure how I feel about uh, his performance in game number one. There was one moment where he got feared on his uh, on his grappling hook, and then he trinketed the fear into a kidney shot, and that was the moment when they should have been able to kill. And he also had blind there, and there was no trinket on Absturge or Peekaboo. So, Acrolos, I didn't, I wasn't impressed with his performance in game number one, uh, to be completely honest. But I still think that it's better than what I expected from how they sounded when when we were talking about it. Yeah, I think there's been a huge trend of people being like, "Oh wow, in war games, this is actually really solid. Let's pick it up right now." And then they break it out, and then they get. Uh, deletified, right? That's the word they Cleptified. Get. Cleptified. So yeah. they get cleptified, and then they go back to their mains. So when you look at this matchup in particular, you're saying that you see improvement on both sides. Yeah, I see improvement on both sides. And uh, honestly, I think uh, Peekaboo had a really good game in, uh, in the previous game. He kited super well. He avoided Acro a, ho a whole bunch. And he even at some point blinded Acro defensively, realizing that he doesn't need to blind the healer. He has the win condition uh, to just survive and make Ratapai go out of mana. So uh, Peekaboo had a good performance in game number one. But Absturge and, and uh, Whiskey, I want to see more from them. Yeah, they had a bit of a panic attack in that game between Whiskey and Absturge. They overlapped their Spirit Link Totem and their Void Shift. Those are two very powerful defensive cooldowns that can almost guarantee that your partner will survive. They used them at the same time because they panicked to the amount of damage that making a movie was capable of early in that game. If they still had one of those as an option, as an out, Peekaboo survives and Morrow dies. If you make one mistake, if you panic on that stage, you can easily just lose this series. I love the composition that making a movie has brought out. It's something that you don't see a lot and it's something that can catch you off guard. The Gosu crew need to just solid it up here, moving into game two. It was such an evenly fought match, they can still take it. Especially though with the level of competition now. Like, we're in the final day of BlizzCon, and we've been talking about how high the competition has been, even in the lands leading up to this, which didn't have every single region. You make one mistake, you're gone. The only team that has made it all the way to the Grand Finals is Method Orange. Everybody else is just fighting to get up on the main stage to compete against them. Every single series that we take a look at here today is an elimination series until we head into the Grand Final. And now we seem to see the Gosu crew and making a movie comfortable with the compositions that they brought. When we head into the arena, what are we going to see? Are we going to see them clean up? what they did in the first game. Are we going to see making a movie get on match point? Folks, I need you to make a little bit of noise. The Gosu crew against making a movie. You really got to love the energy here on the final day of BlizzCon. This is the last time in 2018 we're going to celebrate the skills, the endless hours that all of these players have committed to the game, to the championship title. But there can only be one BlizzCon champion. We're seconds away from game two between the Gosu crew and making a movie. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see if the Gosu crew that can play a little bit more solid defense. That cooldown overlap we saw in game number one cannot happen if they want to win against the team at high of a caliber is making a movie. All right, let's see if making a movie can get a surprise attack here. Morrow sneaking across the map, invisibility. They, they can't see him. If Morrow can get in a good position, they could have a devastating start. I'm curious if making a movie are going to surprise attack after tomorrow. Out of invisibility now, Peekaboo can start the fight. This is a great opener for the Gosu crew. Yep, Vendetta going to be pulled out right away on tomorrow. The Gosu crew wants to get offensive. Acro is going to be shutting it down with a blind on Absurge. Once again, Whiskey saving Peekaboo with the life grip, getting him out of that devastating meteor. That was really great teamwork from Whiskey. Life gripping Peekaboo to safety out of that meteor. Vampiric Embrace to start supporting him. Really good cooldown usage from Whiskey early on. That allows them to extend their cooldowns for a much longer window of time to burn Ratapai's mana down. Peekaboo gunning down for Morrow at this point. Bit of a targeting change up here from the Ghost Crew. They were targeting Acro in game one. This time around, targeting Morrow, looking to break up his crowd control as much as possible. Cheeky mind control.
rolls from Wizcape, potentially to try and run Ratapai out of mana. He's going to use those expensive dispels to remove that. In the meantime, making a movie, start an attack. But they managed to break it up for a couple of seconds. Peekaboo survives the stun lock. Shadow stepping aggressively over to Maro, trying to force him off of Absturge. Kidney shot denies the poly, but Ratapai in position to follow up. Gets denied with a mass dispel. Once again, great teamwork by Wizke. Yeah, nicely done by making a movie, though, getting those crowd control setups consistently. Maro in a little bit of trouble. Peekaboo looking to reconnect, but he's caught into the Frost Nova. Maro getting lo lower with the silence on Ratapai. This short onto him, unfortunately. I think Garode actually was on diminishing return, so he didn't get oh. full value out of that. Kidney shot on Acro. Goes through crew, making plays all over the place. Yeah, back and forth between both of these teams, battling it out in the lower bracket. Tournament lives on the line. Absurd with big recovery cooldowns. He wants his team to be safe and healthy to make a play, but now they're overextended. Morrow gets interrupted on the crowd control. Ratapai moves in. He gets stalled out, but the Ring of Frost is good. Peekaboo's in trouble, but Morrow dips low at the same second in this ice block at dangerously low. Low health. Will Ratapai be able to save Morrow in time? Making movie continue the chain, but it's now faded. Morrow in trouble out of that ice block, and the Gosu crew have a massive lead. Yeah, making movie. There is a smoke bomb available on Peekaboo. Kidney shot on Morrow. Gosu crew looking to put a point on the bar. Morrow gets lower, gets mind controlled on his temporal shield, dispelled by Ratapai immediately. Nicely done by what Ratapai. That was a sick play from Whiskey, but he was able to shut it down. Dark Archangel available. If Morrow can land some burst here, it could be devastating. They're going to pop it. They're going all in on Peekaboo. Absturge trades instantly to that attack. And now the Gosu crew have burned through a lot of their defensive cooldown arsenal. But they've got one more opportunity here. They commit the blind. They need to take Maro in these next couple of seconds, but he's kiting too effectively. Acro is going to save him. Defensive blind sap from Acro denies the kill on Maro. Sick plays by Acro. Yeah, you can see the Gosu crew. They have no trinkets. Once again, making a movie. They just need one clean setup. They have to survive a little bit longer. Morrow's going to be in a little bit of trouble right now. Ratapai has no cooldowns left to save him. Peekaboo connects with the full kidney shot. Morrow going to be getting lower. Silence on Ratapai. He trinkets life from Morrow to safety. Yeah, but Ratapai has burned through that mana. If making a movie can't get a kill soon, it's looking grim here in game two for them. Morrow getting bursted. Whiskey sets up the crowd control. Lands the double. Morrow is all alone. Peekaboo gunning down for his life. Will Ratapai be able to save him in these final seconds? He blinks on 5%. Penance is good. He barely stays alive. And now making a movie start to strike back. Peekaboo down at half. Full polymorph secured. Peekaboo trades. He will stay alive. Marching towards Morrow. Morrow in desperation. Will he be able to stay in this? No. Ratapai can't keep him going. Gosu crew take game two. All tied up, and that is a thing that we like to call the move. The Gosu crew going to be able to level out the scoreboard, but we have to bring up the back, Zico. We see it again. These offensive opportunities instantly become dangerous. Making a movie sees openings, and we see the same thing on the side of the Gosu crew. Why does it keep going so back and forth? I think a big reason is just because individually, this is a matchup where a player can make a big play and it's going to swing the match. Towards the end there, for example, where Morrow lands that polymorph uh, onto Absturge when he's on like 10%, that all of a sudden swings all the momentum in their favor. All Acro has to do is just land a stun uh, onto Peekaboo, and then they can get that big meteor burst. That's going to force out cooldowns. I want to say, with K though, phenomenal performance this game. He. The main thing that you want to be scared of from the Fire Mage is that uh, Blaster Master build with uh, the Meteor. So, and uh, what Mages end up doing is they triple Fire Blast you, they get like 4,000 mastery, then the uh, Ignite from that Meteor, plus the fact that the Meteor is going to crit because you combust it, is going to be a huge amount of instant yeah. damage. And Whiskey was always gripping Peekaboo away from those meteors. He was always gripping Peekaboo on top of Absturge as well. So Maru can't even use it in the first place. And Whiskey with the Vampiric Embraces, with the Silences, just putting up a lot of pressure as well. Hands down, had an insane performance this game. That's one of the things that is so enjoyable to watch these two compositions go head to head because it enables each of these players to be playmakers. And that's truly what we have on our hands. Folks, this is an elimination series. It's all tied up. We're going to keep it rolling. NA versus EU. The 2018 World of Warcraft Arena World Championship is brought to you in part by Republic of Gamers. Corsair, T-Mobile, Samsung SSD, and NVIDIA.
Check out the new Blizzard's eSports mobile app. For the first time ever, all Blizzard eSports content can be found in one place. Get the latest news and schedules for your favorite eSports events all year long. Set alerts for tune-in reminders so you can watch live and check out scores to stay up to date. You can even tailor the look of the app to match your favorite game and look forward to even more features coming in 2019. Download the Blizzard's eSports mobile app right now. In the Overwatch League, you're hyping up the chat, taking your team to hashtag trending, and spreading memes at tracer level speed. All while watching us cap the point. Speed like that deserves a network that can keep up. With T-Mobile, get all the Overwatch League you can handle with coast-to-coast -coast coverage. Now your arena is where you make it. Both of these teams are facing elimination. We got the Gosu crew versus making a movie, and right now, it is all tied up, folks. We're about to see the same compositions go head to head. Who will find themselves on match point? Who will find themselves just one game away from being sent home from BlizzCon? Let me hear you make some noise! Neither team is pulling any punches in this best of five series. Who's going to be going home and who's going to have a second chance in this tournament? We're about to find out here in game number three. It's been a nail biter. Both of these teams completely evenly matched. We see making a movie with a much better start here in game three, but WizK once again with great support. Might not even be enough. Peekaboo forced to trade out a lot of his defensive arsenal through Acro's initial attack. I can't help but feel that was a huge overreaction from Peekaboo. They used everything. Evasion, Cloak of Shadows, Trinket, Fame. Still playing defensive in the situation. Absurd finally out of crowd control, able to land some heals. Ratify Trinket in exchange as well. So Ghost Crew has an opportunity to land some crowd control. A silence into the stun. Marl could get taken down. Looks like making a movie is actually putting some decent pressure on WizK. Yeah, making a movie went all in on Peekaboo. It didn't pay off for them. Now they're going to be heavily behind here, and the Ghost of Crew are looking to ramp up some momentum. Crowd control is good on Rata. Maro dips low here very early on. Ratapai denies the kill with a well-placed barrier. Maro now looking to reverse the crowd control of his own. 
three on one towards Peekaboo. Tons uh -oh. of damage. WizK gets locked out. Abster just forced to trade and making the movie stay in it. Yeah, Ghost of Crew has used almost everything. Void Shift is the only thing available to keep Peekaboo alive, but WizK has no trinket. Making a movie is one setup away from winning this game. Nacro still has a smoke bomb available. Morrow knows that he's playing defensive, just spamming out the polymorphs. They just need to buy a little time. Yeah, what is the move for the Ghost of Crew here in game three? They're against the wall. They don't have many options to survive another attack if they can't get a kill within the next 20 seconds. It's going to be looking grim for Peekaboo. Peekaboo after hiding behind the pillar. They know it's coming. Is making the movie going to be able to close out here? Peekaboo still on the run. Morrow gets the triple. If they can get follow up off this, they Land it. WizK needs to support. Will Peekaboo hang on? Master Spell connects. WizK hard carries. WizK, a phenomenal job defensively there. The double fear, the Master Spell, keeping Peekaboo alive. Morrow now into the kidney shot. He has no trigger to get out of this. Smoke bomb gets dropped. Oh. They're looking for the damage. Can they get the ice block? Morrow escapes with his life. Temporal shield. Ratify connects the heels and he stabilizes. Peekaboo needs to stay alive for a couple more seconds. Ten seconds away from that trinket. Will WizK carry once again? It does look to be the case. Ratify moves in to deny WizK's support. Will it be enough? Peekaboo is dipping dangerously low. He needs a couple more seconds. Is he going to make it? He makes it, but they overlap. A bit of a panicked moment there for the Ghost of Crew, and that's a huge opening for making a movie. And now swap on WizK. He has this version available. Will he use it? Ratify trinkets out of the blind. They need another nice setup. The Ghost crew needs to buy a little time but not really working with too much like you said Sid that overlap from peekaboo with whisk with the void shift doesn't leave ghost crew in a great spot the ghost crew don't have many cooldowns ratapai doesn't have very much mana it's a race to the finish peekaboo is going to have a huge burst window here morrow denies it with a well-placed temporal shield soaking it up but absurd manages to purge it off morrow and acro are isolated the crowd control is good on ratapai if they can keep this chain going a bit longer the chain gets dropped ratapai's free morrow should recover he's looking to set up to win landing that polymorph peekaboo trinkets he's in trouble. Acro moves in with the killing spree, but the mind controls from WizK. The support looks good, and Peekaboo's likely to reverse this. Ratify getting locked down, hanging on by a thread in these final seconds. Ratify gets mind control. WizK hard carrying again. Maro denies the support. Making the movie stay in it, but for how much longer, Ben? Power barrier from Ratapai is the only thing that kept Acro alive. Very nicely done by making a movie to stay in this game just a little bit longer. That was Peekaboo's vendetta as well. They didn't commit it tomorrow. Still has the ice block. Oh. Big setup on Peekaboo. Cheap draw down half surge. Can they take him down? Peekaboo looking to kite. He needs to get away, putting a little pressure on tomorrow. Once again, Ratapai landing a huge fear. Half surge into the polymorph. Peekaboo's left all alone. It, trying to survive, he's getting lower, he's out of line of sight. Absurge has a few seconds left on the crowd control. Finally gets out, drops the Earthen Shield totem, and the Ghost of Crew lives. Whiskey is putting the team on his back right now. Single-handedly allowed Peekaboo to survive during that last attack, and now they've got an opportunity here. Ratify's completely ran out of steam. Both these teams with basically nothing left to stay in the fight. At any point, when crowd control is initiated, the Ghost of Crew pull the trigger first. Lot of burst coming in from Absturge. They want to close this out. Ratify retreating back. But they're going to go for the blind play. This could easily be it. It's triple crowd control. It looks good. And making a movie are going to not take it down. Peekaboo hangs on by a thread. But Absurge is still locked down in crowd control. They need to get Absurge out as soon as possible. But he's just getting chained. Peekaboo on the run. Peekaboo no stays alive. Peekaboo lives. The miracle worker trades out everything to survive. That setup was beautiful for making a movie. But oh. Peekaboo's not out of it yet. DR polymorph on Absurge. Peekaboo still has to keep himself alive. Defensive fear on Acro. He's got no trinket. Oh, and a nice sap coming in from Peekaboo. That buys the Ghost of Crew enough time. Ratapai running on fumes. I don't know how much longer they can live, Sid. If Acro can get a re-stealth off the back of that sap, could be devastating. But he walks into a double fear by WizK. Looking for the final setup here, potentially. Smoke bomb gets dropped in desperation. Morrow in trouble. Blinking to safety. Peekaboo gets scouched up. Acro trying to save him, but it may not be enough. Ratapai's got basically nothing left to work with here. Peekaboo getting set up on the same time. Morrow or Peekaboo could fall at any second in this game. Morrow has Hangs on, Ratify, how are you doing this? You got nothing, but he's still hanging on. Quadrized Prox, Morrow on the run, but he's gonna go down. But Peekaboo at the same time, could he play full? Whoa! Denies the cross killing, folks. You need to start thinking about the potential history. If the Gosu crew can manage to keep moving forward in the lower portion of the bracket, we could have the first ever BlizzCon NA versus NA Grand Final. They're going through a very tough team, though. You know, we're, we gotta give credit where credit's due. You look at this team and you say, if there's anybody who may feel pressure on the main stage, it would be WizK. 
and this guy is trying to get an MVP trophy right now. Whiskey is just putting his team on his back throughout the entire match. There were so many opportunities where making a movie lands Polymorph, making a movie stands up Peekaboo. Whiskey goes for the Master Spell, gets interrupted, gets a Mind Control instead, where he's preemptively casting a Mind Control, where he's silencing the ReCCs, or he's getting Triple Fears. This guy, you, I, if, if I'm making a movie, I would just say, you know what, let's just go on Whiskey because even if he, he's, he's the tankiest guy here, he's just, he's just farming us. I mean, look, if Wiz K did not play out of his mind there, how many situations are there, Super Tees, where we could have seen the Ghost Crew go down? There were a lot of overlaps. If you just look at the defensive cooldowns that they actually had at their disposal, there were so many times where you just look and you say, oh, making a movie should close it out here. Well, the Ghost Crew definitely made mistakes in that game, but they covered it and were, realized it. They didn't just simply give up after making that mistake. They did everything in their power to use every other option that they had. That one moment where Peekaboo hung on yeah. around the corner it was just absolutely look, insane. Look at this. this is actually crazy. Absturge gets blind, sheeped. Look at Peekaboo. He steps to Absturge, kicks Morrow, then he runs around the corner, ducking and dodging from everybody on the map. That's a 20-second cross CC chain. It's a 20-second one versus three, and he is on 10%. He makes it out alive, and uh, I think that was the Vampiric Embrace as well from Whiskey, doing a little bit of work there, but still, that was insane. That moment, I wrote him up. As soon as he got stunned there, I was like, okay, this is it. We're going to the next game. I, you know, and you're not crazy at all. It did seem like the situation there, but all of a sudden the Gosu crew just one game away from eliminating making a movie from BlizzCon and marching on forward in this tournament. Now, we talked about composition, Sven, quite a bit. And we were saying that one of the reasons watching this matchup is so great is because it enables everybody to be a playmaker. But my question for you, is this a matchup that we see all the way through the rest of the series? Do we expect it here again on Tolveron Arena? Well, for the Gosu crew, there's no reason for them not to lock in the RPS once again. It's one of their best compositions. It is what they're known for. And making a movie, they know that. They know the compositions they needed to prepare against the Gosu crew. It's likely making a movie really has no better option. It does seem like this is one of those situations where we want to see these teams play the comps again as well because it really does feel like they are at home on their mains, on the main stage, we go back and forth. Even though it's two to one, it seems even closer to that when we're actually in the arena. Yeah, absolutely. But I think the map here is kind of a giveaway that making a movie are gonna swap things over here. I think we're gonna see Lord Villay enter the fray. That wasn't rhyming on purpose, but uh, yeah. It worked, though. It, it, it kind of worked, yeah. It definitely did, Valet. The, the, the map pick is kind of bad for uh, making a movie because Absturge is going to have a very easy time avoiding crowd control on a big map like this with large pillars. What, what do you think the chance is we see Ratify coming in the Shaman and see some RPS mirrors? Nope. Yeah, I don't think Zero. Oh, okay. It's well, already. Nope. Yeah. Nope. Spoiler alert. Nope. <laughs> it's not going to happen. Making a movie, locking in the same composition once again. I didn't see. Is Acro playing uh, L -L -L? Oh, okay. again? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, it's just, it's pretty much just been the same compositions all the way through. And it may be the same compositions all of the way to the end of the series because this could be the last game. Yeah. yeah. Wait. Whiskey basically is a mind reader, predicting the crowd control setups, denying it before it even happens, and then Peekaboo with just split second reaction time to avoid many near death experiences. Both these teams completely evenly matched, but the Gosu crew, they're on match point. If they win this game, they stay in the tournament, making the movie go home. Yeah, and then the winner of this one will go on in our third match of the day to play the winner of either skill capped. EU or pen and paper, which is the next matchup that we have. That's kind of how the day does look. And honestly, <laughs> you're running into another just difficult team. All of the teams that are left could very easily take the grand final, but folks, do you think the Gosu crew has what it takes to close it out here against making a movie? to send them home, or will making a movie extend it all of the way to game five? We're gonna touch down in Tolveron Arena. This could be the end of the line for making a movie. Yeah, making a movie once again. They need to have perfect cross crowd control to take down Peekaboo. Whiz-K is gonna be looking to deny it throughout the entire game. If the Gosu crew can deflect, they can win it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the Ghost of Crew are on match point. The gates have opened. This is going to be a bloodbath start to finish. If you make even one mistake, that will be the end of you. Whiskey with Mind Sears desperately trying to find Acro, but he's able to sneak in. 
Is he going to go for a surprise attack? It doesn't look like it. Peekaboo manages to get a sap on Ratapai. Nice reaction by Peekaboo. This gives the Ghost crew a great start. Yeah, Peekaboo wants to get aggressive with that sap as well. Pulling the trigger on the Vendetta. Ratapai into the silence, potentially into a blind, but Peekaboo's not there to get it. Peekaboo actually vanishes off during the setup. He doesn't want to have to trade out anything else. That was a beautiful play by Peekaboo, forcing Morrow and Akra to put pressure on Wiz K, which is essentially wasted damage. Nice start by Peekaboo, forcing many cooldowns from making a movie. And Securing a significant lead here on match point. If I'm making a movie, I am starting to sweat. No Gladiator's Medallion on the healer. Mara with no Gladiator's Medallion. This is desperation. It's basically up to Acro. What can he do to get something going here for their team? It's Dire Straits. Mara caught in a stun once again, but Acro makes the move. Gunning down Peekaboo. Tons of damage. Does he gonna, is he going to be able to carry the team? No. He gets denied. Peekaboo survives, and the Ghost of Crew continue their lead. That was missed time by Acro. Unfortunately, Mara was in a kidney shot during that setup. He couldn't commit any damage, but Peekaboo's still in a little bit of trouble. Master Spell coming in from WizK, freeing up Absurge for a second, but there's a Polymorph on Absurge. Peekaboo uses the evasion, trying to avoid some damage. Absurge has to trinket, has to trade out the Spirit Link. Peekaboo trinkets as well. The Gosu crew basically trades out everything in that exchange. The lead that they established has now been lost, and this game is much more evenly matched in the making of movie. Stay in it. WizK getting attacked a bit here. Akaratapai Maro looking to push forward. Peekaboo, Absurge, and WizK positioning defensively here. Posturing up for making a movie's next attack. No Gladiator's Medallions on the side of Gosu Crew. Crowd control will sit for full durations, which is deadly against a rogue mage priest. WizK, he's reading the situation. He's got Vampiric Embrace rolling right before the attack engages, stalling the fight out, potentially long enough, but there's the triple crowd control threat. Will uh -oh. Peekaboo fall here in game number four? It Looks like it's going to be good. Peekaboo is going to stay in it. Really? How is he doing this? 5% health. Peekaboo holds on. No, he no, to no, no way. WizK with a hero void chip keeps Peekaboo in the fight. The go-to crew, they need to get aggressive right now. Fear on Ratapai. Akra taking a bit of damage, but Mara was the main target here. Big damage on him. Forced into the ice block. Will there be a master spell? No, Akro shuts it down with a stun on WizK. That was the scariest point in the game for the Ghost of Crew, and they make it out alive. Potentially have to do it again, though. They didn't net a kill. They got an ice block. Ratapai still has a lot left in the tank to keep his team going. He knows that. He's getting aggressive, moving for a power play. Standing right on top of Absurge. He gets blinded. Trinkets. Absurge locked in crowd control. WizK once again, life gripping Peekaboo right before the psychic scream, avoiding that meteor. Nice play, but it might not even be enough. Peekaboo in panic mode here to try and stabilize. He's got multiple chief shots. He's on the run, looking to break up the crowd control. Once again, the Ghost of Crew survive another situation that any other team would have fallen to. Very nicely done by the Ghost of Crew. Making a movie is doing beautiful CC, but they're just getting denied everywhere. And now Morrow into the kidney shot. Ratapai forced to use the power barrier. Hex snuck in by Absurge, gets decursed immediately. Morrow, he has his combustion, so making a movie, they still have an opportunity. But the Ghost of Crew, everyone's got their trinket available. Peekaboo has the evasion, has the Cloak of Shadows. What are they going to do? This game is swinging in favor of the Ghost of Crew. It's match point, making a movie, need a miracle here. Peekaboo pre-faints the incoming stun, trades out Cloak, Acro drops the Stun chain. Misplay there by Acro. That leaves an opening for the Ghoster crew. Ratapai's tapped out on mana at this point. Maru doesn't have much to stay in the fight either. Crowd control's over. Peekaboo guns down for the final stun, potentially here of the game. Instant win here by Absturge. Nice job there. Maru blinks. He tried to stay in it. Wizkay's moving in. Maru holding on by a threat. Wizkay nails it, and Maru's in trouble. How much longer can he stay alive? Peekaboo's gunning down to stay in this tournament, but Maru still holds on by barely in this fight. But he is ultimately going to knock him. Oh, he's only up by a three. This is actually unbelievable. It's not enough. The Ghost of Crew stay in it. The Ghost of Crew going to be able to take this series. North America has another hope. BlizzCon, let me hear it one more time. The Ghost of Crew. This is just the beginning of their road, though. They have. You know, you talk about Sidu being the final boss. Next up, we're going to see Skill Capped EU versus Pen and Paper. That, yeah, that is going to be an insane series. And the congratulations to the Ghost Crew and an unbelievable performance. But their next match could be their most difficult yet. They're just not done yet. I think that's the most important thing to say. They're going to have to play against the winner of Skill Capped EU versus Pen and Paper. And then if they make it past that, they have to put against Method Black again. You can see the intensity of that match. Jelly Beans had to sit back and watch his team, and it looks like he just had a heart attack. <laughs>
Yeah, uh, I, mean, yeah. It, it, I mean, being a player in that situation must be so stressful. You're just sitting there, you see all the crowd controls, you see everything that's happening, and you're just forced to sit there helpless, kind of, and just have complete faith in your teammates. I mean, I'm shaking right now, and all I had to do was watch it, so I, I can't even imagine. <laughs> I mean, think, think about even for making a movie, what that's like to go through those situations, because they made so many additional goals for themselves when it looked like they were completely out, but now, you have the Gosu crew moving forward. Congratulations to making a movie, though, for everything they've accomplished this year. We've been all over the world with them. We've watched them grow as a team, and you bet your bottom dollar, they are going to be just doing incredible things next year as well. But now the Gosu crew gets to move forward in this tournament. And let's talk about what that road actually does look like for them. We see one of many compositions that they do have. This seems to be one of their best. But skill-capped EU versus pen and paper, which team do you think they'd rather run into out of those two squads, Zico? I don't know. It's it's. If you asked me a week ago, I would say that's a no-brainer. That's pen and paper. But pen and paper really have showed up. And pen and paper, they play a lot of good comps into what the Ghost Crew runs. They run the Turbo with the Holy Pala. But then again, so does XRP to the Moon. Still, I think it comes down to kind of healer difference there. Who would you rather face, Saji's Holy Pala or Looney's Holy Pala? I think either way, the Ghost Crew has a really difficult road ahead of them uh, in the next two matches because they're going to have to face two teams that play the comp that knocked them down to the lower bracket. I don't think anybody has a very easy road ahead of them today, not even Sidu, who's already waiting in the grand final. But let's take a look at some of the moments that actually got this team, the Gosu crew, up on the main stage grabbing a victory. Yeah, and this was for sure the main point in the game. You can see here is Peekaboo barely, barely hangs on there towards the end of that one. And this was really the biggest moment in the game here. So we can see uh, right away, uh, Absturge is caught up in that blind into that sap. He has no Gladiator's Medallion available. You can see here the fear onto Wiz K is done by Ratapai. Because you might wonder, well, why doesn't he just fear Ratapai? Uh, sorry, Absturge. The reason why is because of this ability right here, which is Void Shift, of course. And then you can see Morrow all the way over here trying to be ready to uh, assist. Uh, uh, the cross CC here onto WizK or to follow up onto Absturge. The biggest problem here was that Peekaboo did not die in the stun here, and that is because uh, they didn't have the Meteor available in the setup. If, they, if Mega Move was a little bit more patient, they would have for sure been able to uh, kill Peekaboo in the stun clean 100 0. So instead, Peekaboo gets out of this Psychic Stream right here, and then he's gonna dip, dodge, and run all the way behind this pillar to dodge Maro's line of sight, to dodge uh, Ratapai's line of Side and to try to stay alive for a couple of seconds. And the big reason to why he survives even to this point is because of that Crimson Vial, which is ticking up his HP slowly right there. You can see a couple of ticks. That keeps him alive long enough to get that Void Shift from WizK. And this was a clean, clean setup for making a movie. Had they waited a little bit for a little bit more damage, they for sure would have killed him right there. Unfortunately for them, they didn't have enough damage to kill Peekaboo in the stun lock. He comes out, Crimson Tempest, nice kiting maneuvers, and they get the swap. And that is basically putting the, uh, making a movie two minutes behind because they invested the blind, they invested a lot of cooldowns there, and they didn't get anything. So. That it, was one they lost in my mind. It's an absurd series, and we have a lot to talk about on the desk, but it's time for us to make the move down to the main stage. Ladies and gentlemen, who else would we have pulled but the man of the hour, man of the year here, Peekaboo, is on the main stage off of that victory. And my first question for you, this is your first win here on the BlizzCon stage. How's it feel, man? Absolutely incredible. After that first series, yeah, I've been kind of stressing since then, but like here, we actually can win games now. We've finally proven it, and it's honestly such an amazing feeling playing with the team and just seeing all the fans showing love, all the people in the crowd, everyone being so excited. Like, that's what it's all about. So thank you all, thank you all. So much energy here, all of this energy for the Gosu crew, for that movement coming in. But I gotta ask you, there's one moment during that series which really caught my eye. Ashermain's full, you know what I'm talking about. That blind on about 2% health there. What was going through your mind in that moment? I, my whole team just told me that you're dead, it's over. And I was like, okay, well, I'm about to leave the arena and re -queue. But it was like, oh, I actually got another stun, like 9,000 health. I got the cloak evasion. I like kited the grapple around the corner. I got the kidney blind. I dodged the meteor from the other side. And I somehow was able to live it. Literally no health, and it was, it was actually one of the most stressful moments I think I've had to deal with in a really long time. So that was, I'm glad I, I'm glad I got through that though, so that was good. 
I think we're glad you got through that. I mean, all the people here, you caused them so much stress. Every single series is so close, and you've got many more series. Let's talk about big picture roadmap here. Still got skill caps, still a pen and paper who gave us one of those heart attacks. And then at the end, the final boss is Method Black, Method Orange. What's the move here? How are you going to make it through this tournament? I think the move is we just got to win. We got we to take it home. We got to play better. We got to step it up, and we got to be prepared. And I honestly think if we're playing well and on our game, we can absolutely do it. We can absolutely do it, says Peekaboo Rich. An ANA final. I know that's what you want. Are we going to see it? Yeah, I would like to see an NA <laughs> final. That would be a it would be history. It honestly would be. I think we may have.